Hello everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel Mission Ed Physics Exam. And guys, in today's video, we are going to discuss the answer of the questions I have provided you in the practice set one, which was uh, related to the questions from atomic and molecular physics. So if you have already attempted all those questions and if you are having any doubt or difficulty in solving any question and getting its answer, this video will provide you the answer and the steps to solve all those questions. Also, you will soon get the practice set two questions. So stay connected on the channel. If you are new on this channel, you can subscribe this channel by clicking on subscribe button below this video. And along with that, like once you will click on subscribe button below this video, you will even get the bell icon there. So click on the bell icon after that to get the notifications for the new videos I will provide you on this channel. That is Mission Ed Physics exam. Guys, even you can share these videos with all your friends, those who are preparing for the exam. So yeah, these videos will even help them. So you can share the videos with your friends as well. And if you like the video, you can like it. Now let's quickly start the discussion about all those questions we are going to consider in this video. Okay, which are basically the practice set one questions and their answers. So this was your first question. The question is the H2 molecule, the hydrogen molecule has reduced mass the reduced mass is given here and an equilibrium internuclear distance r which is this the rotational energy in terms of the rotational quantum number j is that's how the options were given okay in this case what you need to do you should know about the formula of rotational energy which is e rotational is equal to h squared square upon 2 i j into j plus 1 where i is the moment of inertia which is already given in the question no it's not given so what you have to do you can find it by using the formula that is mu r square if you will use this formula and you will put the values in that formula that is i is equal to mu r square as per this question the reduced mass and the distance square you will consider and you will be able to get it. So I have directly considered the value which you will get that is this value after finding mu r square. Okay. Now this is the i value which we have considered here. After this what you need to do once you have got the expression or the answer for h squared square upon 2i. Okay. So you have simplified it. You got this value which is in uh, like in joule its unit is joule right now so what you need to do you need to find it in terms of electron volts so what you have to do to convert it in electron volts you have to divide it by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 okay and once you are dividing it the value will get convert and finally you are getting 7.57 okay now it is like it is gonna match now this value you can put in place of h squared square upon 2i and it is gonna match with the option c which is like more closer to the value you will get so option c in this case will be the right answer also guys let me just tell you one thing that questions based on rotational energy are most expected ones for your upcoming exam you can consider like yeah this is very important topic and the concept based on which you can get the question in your upcoming exam as well here is our second question it is like which of the following statements is true for the energies of the terms of the carbon atom in the ground state electronic configuration that is 1s2 2s2 and 2p2 now what you need to find you basically need to observe that which is the correct sequence in this case so here Hund's rule will help you and as per Hund's rule our first statement is the lowest 2s plus 1 value will have the largest uh, sorry the largest 2s plus 1 value will have the lowest energy that means large 2s plus 1 okay will have the lowest energy which means you can see here 2s plus 1 is 3 here 3 here 3 here 3 okay and all other cases it is 1 so it is like okay we have got this point why it is like going to have the minimum energy as per the first statement of Hund's rule which is largest 2s plus 1 value will have lowest energy okay that's correct next point large l value will have the lowest energy the largest l value now after comparing with the 2s plus 1 value you need to check the l value so what is the largest l value which will have the lowest energy in this case you may even consider it can be d it can be s it can be f it can be s the sequence seems okay but the point is if you want to finalize it so firstly you have to check the values for p2 that what are the spectroscopic terms you are going to get for p2 
so that means you have to firstly find all the spectroscopic terms in case of b2 and how you can find that for two valence electron or two equivalent electrons case we are going to have bright's scheme and how it's going to work so for that you can consider the structure like this which is for p what is the value of l that is 1 okay what are the values of ml plus 1 0 and minus 1 now you need to write for the first electron because two electrons are there write ml1 values here that means plus 1 0 and minus 1 like this this is the bright scheme which works very well for the two equivalent valence electrons case okay again write here plus 1 0 minus 1 this is ml2 now what you need to do this is for second electron you can send this one for first electron you need to just add those values together plus 1 plus 1 2 0 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 0 plus 1 0 plus 1 0 0 0 minus 1 0 minus 1 then this one and minus 2 now in this case what is exactly going to happen for the principal diagonal elements or even values of l will have the spin which will be even okay so the zero, a zero and for odd l <coughs> excuse me you will have odd spin then that means one this is uh, gonna work for the two equivalent valence electrons case okay now write all the spectroscopic terms <coughs> excuse me see when spin is 0 you will get 1 for l is equal to 0 because you know j values will be l minus s to l plus s so you will get them same for this case so 0 minus 0 to 0 plus 0 okay and l is equal to 0 will give you s l is equal to 2 will give you d also it's gonna be 0 1 is 0 and 1 is 1 d 2 next point what we will get next it's gonna be p okay and l minus s to l plus s will give you what the values of j in this case will be 0 1 2 so it's gonna be p okay 0 1 2 and 3 done 3 p 0 3 p 1 3 p 2 that's how you are going to get it now the point is already you are having 3p present okay you have considered that that it is going to have the lowest energy okay next point what are the other things you are getting 1d and 1s you don't need to focus on the j values in this case you will even just keep it only till uh, like the 2s plus 1 and l value you don't need to find the j value in this question so now 1s and 1d you are having which is present in this case and in this case you know largest l value will have the lowest energy so this one and then this one so that's how you are getting that option a is correct okay that's how you will be able to get and finalize your final answer in this case here is your next question guys the question is the ground state electronic configuration of the rare earth ion that is nd3 positive is pd which is 4f3 5s2 5p6 assuming ls coupling the lendage effector of this ion is 8 upon 11 the effective magnetic moment in units of Bohr magneton is so basically what you need to do you need to firstly recall the formula for the magnetic moment which is this that is mu is equal to lendage factor gj mu b that is Bohr's magneton root j into j plus 1 now what you have to do firstly you have to find the ground state j value then put it there in this particular expression so here I have shown the steps that what you have to do to find the ground state j value. Okay, this method works very well to find the ground state spectroscopic terms. So here we have just filled the three electrons. Okay, in this case, we got the summation ml value just by adding these values together in which we have considered the electrons. Summation ms if it's a spin is half, half, half. Summation ms will be 3 by 2. After this, j is equal to l minus s to l plus s that's how 6 minus 3 by 2 to 6 plus 3 by 2 you will be able to get uh, like 12 minus 3 9 upon 2 and 12 plus 3 15 upon 2 like that done and in this case what will be the ground state it is less than half filled case in f orbital you can have total 14 electrons but right now only 3 are filled so it is less than half filled case and lower j value will have the lowest energy so 9 by 2 is the ground state j value now what you will do you will put it here in this expression 
g j value is already given the ln g factor value in the question which is 8 upon 11 you will just put it here you will simplify and you will get it approximately 3.62 which is present in option c and that is the right answer for this question next next question is an atom uh, in its singlet state is subjected to a magnetic field the g min is splitting of its this much nanometer spectral line its g min splitting we are considering is this this is the g min splitting that means delta lambda with the unit even you can get the idea it's frequency or it is wavelength shift okay so it is wavelength shift this time this is lambda and what they are asking you to find magnetic field b so you know the formula which is going to provide you the relation between delta lambda lambda and b that is this formula which is related to wavelength shift okay and uh, after just rearranging the terms you will be able to get the value of b from here and that's how you are going to get the final expression after taking the simplification steps and that will give you 1.5 to tesla i hope that the approach will be clear to all of you and that's how you can get your final answer next point is also guys if you are finding the formula new what you can do you can check out the accomplishment series which i have provided you okay and in that i have provided you the quick revision of atomic and molecular physics you will quickly be able to prepare these topics as well as to revise them next question is at the number of spectroscopic terms resulting from the ls coupling of a 3p electron and a 3d electron is so what you have to do this is non equivalent electron case you will firstly have to write the l values for p then write it for uh, d the l value for p is 1 l value for d is 2 find the l value that is l1 minus l2 to l1 plus l2 now you will be able to get it 1 2 3 that means the difference between the values should be of 1 1 1 so you can write it as 1 2 3 s1 spin of one electron which is present in this orbital that is half and for other one even it can be half the net spin will be s1 minus s2 to s1 plus s4 uh, s2 and you will get half minus half zero half plus half one that's how you will be able to get it now the point is if we are going to consider the next step that is when we know about the l values and we also know about the s values now we will just try to find out all the spectroscopic terms when l is equal to 1 2 3 and when l is equal to 1 2 3 corresponding spins are 0 and 1 that's how i have just mentioned them here next point is you just need to write the j values which will be l minus s to l plus s we just got to know about these values of j the difference in the values should be just of one value as you can see here here since you will get only one one so we are just writing it once and then you are writing corresponding spectroscopic terms now what you need to do you need to count them 3 3 3 9 10 11 12 so total 12 and that is option c which is correct so question number five answer option c question number four answer option b that's like something i have already mentioned question number three answer option c let's check yeah we have got the same answer it's here question number two answer a and question number one answer c let's just check it out answer a and for the first one answer c yeah that's right okay that's how you are going to get the answer for all these questions and these are very important concept based questions so i hope each and every point will be clear to all of you and that's how you can just get many important questions with the practice sets okay i will provide you many important other questions too in the upcoming practice set which you will get soon so if you are new on this channel you can subscribe this channel by clicking on subscribe written below this video also guys Click on the bell icon to get the notification about the videos I will provide you on this channel. Okay. Or the channel upload. Also guys, here now I am going to provide you the information about Unacademy Learning App and Unacademy Plus. So basically if you want to attend more regular live classes of the well-structured and well-planned courses, then you can take Unacademy Plus subscription by using and by applying the referral code that is Anjali Arora. As it is mentioned here, you can get the 10% discount in the total Unacademy Plus subscription amount. No space in between, that's how you need to write it and apply it. Anytime whenever you are going to take the Unacademy Plus subscription, you can use and apply this referral code and get the 10% discount in the total Unacademy Plus subscription amount. Also guys on Unacademy Plus, like in the special classes, we are going to have the Revise India series which will start in November. So yeah, if you can even attend the sessions of 
uh, this in this series we will have and that's how like you will be able to prepare very well in remaining time before the exam so these sessions will be helpful for all of you as well so guys i hope each and every point which we have discussed in today's session will be clear to all of you and thank you so much everyone for watching this video till the end and uh, guys once when you will take the unacademy plus subscription you will be able to get so many benefits like mock test will be there mock test analysis sessions will be there doubt clearing sessions will be there you will be able to attend the live classes and the courses by all the top educators and that's how you'll be able to prepare very well for your upcoming exam so i hope all these things together will help you a lot to prepare very well for your upcoming exam thank you so much everyone for watching this video till the end thank you